What's up everybody, it is a hot day here. I'm in the backyard sitting next to the pool. I got my dog. What else could I possibly need? One problem, I don't have a pool. That's not my dog. That's not even my house. All this is possible from generative fill on Photoshop. We've been using generative fill for photo manipulation, but what if we used it for video manipulation? There is so much we can do with generative fill and AI, and I'm gonna show you how I turn this into this. Let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I did that intro, and maybe you learned something, maybe you don't, but either way, this is still a cool feature to know, and it might come in handy one day. But before we get started, that's not real. And it's just that easy. All right, so I've got my clip here in DaVinci Resolve. I'm using DaVinci Resolve because I'm trying to switch from Premiere, but that's a video for another time. Um, this, this will work on anything, uh, Premiere, Final Cut, anything. But you will need an Adobe subscription. So to save time, I already kind of moved things around and I have my clip on the timeline. First thing to note, it's important that your camera stay still for this. So tripod is a must. Any movement with the camera, it's not gonna work unless you want a lot of extra work for yourself. Uh, easiest route, just keep it, keep it locked off. So here's the shot. The first thing I wanna do is grab a screenshot of what I'm working with. So I'm gonna take this first screenshot in DaVinci. I don't know, there might be other ways, but this is the way I know how to do it. I'm still learning DaVinci, honestly. Uh, grab still, it comes over here. You can see uh, my other ones that I've done. Right click, export, and then you save it, right? Okay, I already did it, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Next thing you're gonna need is to go to Photoshop Beta. In your Creative Cloud, you'll see that there is Photoshop but then there's Photoshop beta. And if you have Photoshop, you have access to the beta. Just download it and you will have access to generative fill and all these other cool features. I went ahead and loaded this in. Now, this is, this is my blank slate that I am working with. Uh, now, keep in mind, it's, a, it's, it's kind of important to know, this is not going to turn out exactly like the intro because when I generate for this explanation, uh, it's not going to generate the same things. So no, it's not going to look exactly the same, but who knows, maybe we'll come across something better. Let's dive in. So this is just my blank slate, and this is how I know what I have to work with. There's a couple things I need to note here. Uh, when I shot, I made sure I didn't move a lot. Uh, that gives me more to play with, because if there's anything that I want to generate behind me, once again, that's a lot of extra work, and that's a video for another time. I just wanted to be able to stick these images in where I wanted them and not have to worry about masking or anything like that. So uh, the first thing I did, uh, I came over, I grabbed my lasso tool and I thought, oh, a pool would be great, right? And honestly, I said all this stuff not even knowing if this would work. So I, I just had that much faith in it. I said, hey, that's not my pool. I didn't even know if a pool would go there, but we, we did it. So let's try this again. So if I put, uh, let's say here, I know I don't really stretch my arm out too far. I'm going to select that region, click Generative Fill, type in what you want. I think when I generated my first pool, I typed in swimming pool with fence around it. And then I hit Generate, it does its thing. Uh, each one of these generations is gonna take a couple seconds. So I'll, I'll speed it up for the sake of the video. Okay, so here's our first batch of swimming pools. Uh, each time you generate, it will give you three options. Uh, the first one, okay. Second option, not bad. It does look a little funky because it's just in the grass. My third option, that honestly looks better, but maybe we generate again, right? We, we, wanna, we want the best option. Honestly, that one looks great. That one looks, that one's, whether or not it's believable, there's a pool there. So let's go with that. Over here is where I had my dog. I just sort of circled some area and I just put a uh, sleeping dog. I got a new keyboard, so it is very, I'm not used to typing on here. So there will be typos, but sleeping dog. 
This is the one that kind of gave me some trouble. Um, it's not that it generated anything bad. It just didn't blend well. So some, I think I had to generate this one a couple times to, to get the dog to work. All right, let's see what we got. All right, so our first option, it's not half bad, actually. Um, I, I love the way Generative Fill works with light. It matches the light in the area beforehand. The, there were some uh, breaks in the trees with some of these, um, these sunny spots just where the sun is peeking through. And as you can see, it kind of picked up on that because some of the dogs in the shade, some of it has some sun on him. I actually really like that, but let's see what else we got. Not bad. Also not bad. I'm going to go with this first one just because it, it works. Uh, the next thing I did, and uh, it's kind of one of those subtle things. Over here, I put, uh, I told it to originally put a door with a step. And, uh, and it just put this piece of wood against the back of my shed, but it worked. And I thought it'd be a fun little subtle, subtle uh, addition. So I kept it. Uh, let's see what it comes up with this time. Okay, we get three doors. That doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. That one's all right. You know what? Like I said, this is not going to be the same exact thing. Sometimes you get what you get. If you want to play with it for, for a bit uh, and really dial in your wording, you'll get close. But for the sake of this, I think this is fine. Uh, the next thing I did, and it was another subtle one, I put, I, I just put a bunch of flowers right here. Uh, Let's just say uh, flowers. I'm pretty sure that's what I put. Okay, so the first thing kind of ignored the flowers altogether, gave me a log. I'm not really sure why <laughs> this is uh, this is different. Um, let's say uh, let's just say wild flowers. I don't know why it was giving logs. So it really does not want to give us flowers right now. It gave me flowers earlier. I just want to move on. A log. We're going with a log. And you know what? It's a, it's a believable log. Let's go with that one. I like it. Uh, the next thing I did, I just completely uh, changed my house. And just keeping on the trend, I just kind of circled my house. I'm Remember, I'm not getting anything that is behind me because uh, it will be harder to just plug in. And I, that all I wanted for this was to be able to just drop it in. So I'm just gonna put a nice house. Uh, for some reason, I have to put nice house, because if I just put house, it gave me a bunch of shacks, like a bunch of kind of broken down shacks the first time. Uh, so we say nice house. And that's a pretty nice house. It, there is some funkiness to it, you know, mainly here and stuff. But let's see what else we got. Looks good. You know, at a quick glance, I don't think anybody would think anything. I'm gonna go with this one. Does it look perfect? No, but let's go big house. What if we put mansion? Like I said, it is. it does take some time to get exactly what you're looking for. And you may not actually get what you're looking for, honestly. Uh, well, let's keep this going, okay. That looks fine. It's a funky house. It's quirky. We'll go, we'll go with quirky. All right, so this is a photo with all these elements, but how do we put it in our video? Uh, from there, it's pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to go over to my layers, hide my initial layer. That is going to just show me what's left. Uh, for the sake of the video that I showed you, because I wanted things to be able to disappear, uh, I boarded each one of these layers individually so I had that control, but if you don't have that intention and you just want this to be the way it is, uh, just go over. You want to export this as a PNG. I'm going to put it on my desktop just for the sake of uh, demonstration. Go back to Resolve. Uh, I'm going to bring, the, bring in that clip. It's important to export as a PNG so you have that transparent background. JPEG, not gonna work. You're only gonna see those elements. Uh, you want a PNG or something that can give you that transparent background. So here, here we go. All I'm going to do is drop this on top and instantly you can see if I hit play. 
So, there you have it. I just, I just put it right on top and it's overlaid. So, you can see why I didn't want to move my hands all around because if I clipped into that, into that PNG, uh, I would end up behind that image. Uh, and we don't like that. So, it is a little bit of being cautious of where you are and kind of a little, a little bit of foresight into what exactly you're looking for so you know how to move within your frame. Is that the best one? No, but you just saw me generate all this and this took less than ooh, 20 minutes to do. This opens up so many options uh, for creativity and creating. I am very amazed at how well this works. Are there bugs? Yes, but it's still in beta. Six months ago, we weren't really even talking about this kind of stuff. And we're already here, so think about in the next six months. Where is this going to be? It's crazy. So there you have it. We replaced my house, gave myself a bigger dog, gave myself a pool, which I would appreciate right now because it is hot outside. So with that being said, it's been fun. Go make something.